though all those exclamations of trust from both Wanya and Butad had overwhelmed me massively after all of the self-doubt which had plagued me, it was a serious relief to get validation from the person who mattered most, the one whom I thought had betrayed me and usurped my kingdom, actually fully supported me. Such an amazing feeling. Back in the inn, it seemed things had changed a bit, despite what I had wanted. It escalated and... This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 48 No Safety Nidak fell on her hands and knees, silent sobs twitching her body. She moved to sitting with her knees folded underneath her. Someone hugged her closely as she held her hands up to her face. Mistress, a familiar voice in her ear. Mistress, what is wrong? Are you hurt? The comforting arms around her loosened their grip, but Nidak forced them to stay. Mistress, please, talk to me. Quick, go get warm water and clothes. You, get that halberd of her. Find her wounds. No. Nedek swallowed hard. Not hurt. She swallowed again, feeling self-control return. Someone tugged at her halberd, but it didn't lift from her back. Nedek released Melia from the hug and smiled at her. Happy. Appreciated. Wanted. With the worst of the crying fit over, she looked around the room. A servant stepped away, frowning at the halberd. The bed had been pushed on its side, against the wall, providing an open space. Another servant, Nidak realized it was her new one, Miralda, came running in with a basin presumably containing hot water. She stumbled as the innkeeper bumped into her from behind. Milia still kneeled next to Nadek, urging Miralda to come closer. She dipped one of the cloths in the water, wrung it out and wiped Nadek's face. She would have protested if the warm cloth hadn't felt so good on her teary puffed skin. Are you certain, mistress? Yes, I am. I'm not physically hurt. Not even mentally hurt. Just overwhelmed, I suppose. I'm sorry for making you panic. But what is going on here? What happened to the room? Milia frowned and nodded towards the innkeeper. He wrung his hands as Nedak locked her gaze onto him. Oh no... She felt a dread rise. What has he done? Uh, oh, my lady. I mean, my queen. Uh, my lady princess. I apologize. I mean, uh, I, I couldn't let you sleep in merely a normal room. So I cleared out my best room for you. And it is still being prepared, I'm afraid. But you will be able to enter soon. It hasn't been used in quite a while, you see, it is such a special room, but people are too cheap to pay the money it deserves, and I, of course, do not want to lower my price because I do know the value, but anyway, your dear servant here told me you still needed this room to uh, Skype to, was it? So I had my man clear it, so you can now keep this room for your Skyping. Is that good? That was good, so... Uh, yeah, that is it. Neda closed her eyes. Foolish, foolish man. Instead of just leaving things as they were, as she had asked, now he'd made such a big stir, he might as well have put a neon sign on top of his inn, pointing toward it, saying, Neda Kisho is here. Here she is, the princess right here, the real heir, here, here, come and see. She'd have to change ends. 
She felt bad for having to do so, especially after having two people tell her how much trust they had in her. She wasn't certain if she had the heart to disappoint anyone at this moment. So, despite me asking you not to do anything, you went ahead and did this? Do you want everyone to know I am here? It seems she could still scold people. It had nothing to do with trust anyway. As a queen, she'd have to act like this soon enough. Still, a sliver of guilt crept its way into her chest. Oh, uh, the innkeeper stammered. No, it, it is not like that, my queen, uh, my lady princess. It is not. It is all right, it is. We have made certain to keep the suspicions away from you. We have let every patron know personally something was going on. We told them he had to empty all rooms and uh, we gave everyone their money back and some more and put them outside to find another and see my queen, lady princess. No one is in here anymore. Only us, so no one can betray you. That was even worse. Everyone searching for Nelak would certainly know where to find her now. Foolish, foolish man. She shouldn't even stay the night. Why didn't you stop him? She whispered towards Milia, who held her up. Apologies, mistress. I tried. I really did. But that man. She huffed. He is as stubborn as they come. With every protest I made, he came up with a so-called solution, which only added onto the madness, as if my opinion was best ignored and even counteracted. Honestly, I do not know how he has managed to have a successful in. Something is wrong with this fellow. Nierk frowned. The more she thought about the situation, the more suspect she found it. The man hadn't been so irrational before. What had happened? Nidak chose to believe someone had manipulated the man somehow. But who and what and how? My dear man, she felt proud of her steady voice. Not a hint of mockery either. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your generosity. But really, as I've said before, you shouldn't have. I will keep the room as a decoy. It is perfect for that purpose. But I'm afraid I can't stay here. The man gained a look of utter disappointment and misery on his face. So Nedek couldn't help but adding, you did a brilliant job at giving me safety. So brilliant I wouldn't have thought of it myself. I will make sure you will get a proper reward once I have my crown. She cringed inside. The man's face lit up at a praise and he stammered a thank you. I will need several items from you. Melia, where is Kitty? A short time later... And a long distance farther, three beds appeared on top of the piece of statue. Melia and Miralda looked around wide-eyed from atop their bed. Miralda whimpered as she saw Blackie, a black outline at the edge, warned by Nerak not to stay in the middle. She came closer, and Kitty jumped off Nerak's bed with a meow, running towards the dragon. Both purr machines added to Nedek's heart, which already overfilled from the encounter with Whiny. Come on, let's set things up and go to sleep. I'm feeling pretty tired. They removed all the things they brought along from the beds and moved them in a better position. The innkeeper had been able to provide them with a small outdoor kitchenette and spare pots. They had enough vegetables to make food for the next few days, and several jugs of water, and a few sneaky ones containing wine. 
The innkeeper had reassured Nadak she could always return for more supplies. Nadak had assured him she would. By the time they finished setting up, Blackie and Kitty had fallen asleep in their dragon and cat donut. The sight made Nadak's spirits soar even more. She had Wani's support. Of all the people, that one meant the most. It was the most significant. Even though she had been forced to flee her city after all, at least she had hope. She considered finding another inn, but the risk would be too large. There was no way of knowing whom to trust. The following day, late morning, she first skipped only the women back to the city. She then gave Kitty a big hug, trying to get assurance he'd be alright while everyone was gone. Hopefully he wouldn't jump off the edge. Blackie gave her a wink as Nadek spoke out loud to Kitty. What did that mean? When she asked, the dragon replied cryptically, Fine will be. Well then, I suppose if you say so, it should be, Nidex said, sarcasm heavy. The dragon merely sat on her haunches and looked at her, panting with her tongue out like a dog. Nida couldn't help but snort at that. Damn dog. She skipped Blackie back into the air above Axago, the same spot as the day before, at the same time she skipped herself to the stockhouse. She stood there for a moment, gloating. Her skipping had improved immensely. She still worried about the coming days, with so many more challenges to come. Mistress? Mila pulled Nedak out of her thoughts. Mirella stood thrown up in a bucket against the wall. Nedak felt glad she had warned her of the second time skipping effect. I found this inside, against the door. It is directed to you. Fear and curiosity crawled over Nedak's neck and back. Someone knew she came here regularly enough to leave a package and be certain it would be found. Trepidation tensed her muscles as she accepted it from Melia. It was a book wrapped with a cloth. A note read, Niece, this might be helpful. Don't be mistaken. This does not mean I am on your side. I want to keep that safe, as you promised you would. I trust you to keep your word. There was no name, but Nadak didn't need any. Only her uncle would refer to her as niece. Her mouth opened of its own accord as she leafed through the pages and read the first few sentences. Notes on skipping. I am keeping this personal journal on my progress for the line of skipping as it goes for me. Having the guidance of Omadak's journal, my dear grandmother, is proving to be of priceless value to my learning the line. So I'm returning the favor and continuing the family tradition. Hopefully these notes will be helpful to one of my future family members. Nedak had to go sit on one of the crates. Her uncle had given his own personal journal about skipping. This proved how much he cared about Patat. A priceless gift indeed. Sudden panic coursing through her blood made her jump upright, which in turn made her crazy enough to have her sight replaced by black spots. The book had been here. He had been here. Her uncle knew about this place. She rubbed her nose between her eyes. Of course he would know. He'd proven to know about Kreilig and Steeden, 
so of course he'd know about this. We won't be able to use the stock house anymore. Frank damn blonky wallops and liver cod. Why did it all have to go in ups and downs all the time? My uncle knows of this building. You'll probably leave it alone to Potata's safe. After that, this stock house is no longer an option. Nothing in the city will be safe. You have been listening to Nedak, Chapter 48, No Safety. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nedak. Written in the better way that I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. The comforting arms around her loosened their grip, but the comforting arms around her loosened their grip. Grib. Second time. But ah, uh, fuck. Someone tugged at her halb. Someone tugged at her halberd. That's difficult. Nidak released Melia from the hug and smiled at <sighs> came running in with a basin, presumably a black outline. <clears throat> the fuck is wrong with my voice? <clears throat> She's still worried about the coming days, with so many more challenges. But She's still worried about the coming days. She's still worried about the common days, with so many more challenges. Challenges, not challenges. Why did it all have to go up? Why did it all? Chapter 49, no. Chapter 48, the sound of three beds dropping on top of a plant-covered statue.